Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So like uh, Dov Moran, I want you to imagine for a second, I'll start with a sh short, sh short story. Imagine you're a VIP person, you know, those celebrities who have a staff around them, a secretary, an assistant, an assistant for that, and those guys would just go across through the day, make sure that, you know, they plan for them everything ahead of time, they make the correct reservations to the hotels they like to stay, to the uh, places they like to go, uh, make sure that they get to the right restaurant and the food is the way they like it. And if something during the day changes, they would notify, they change the schedule, and, and you know, so on and so forth. And as you know, their life is, is great, really, in that respect. It's, it's great in many other respects, but in that respect as well. Um, now imagine that we could build a virtual assistant that would do exactly that, but not just for the celebs and for the very famous people, but for, for each and every one of us, for our daily lives, to make our lives really, really much better, easier, more comfortable. And I believe that we certainly deserve that, and I believe that that's what we really want. That's what the quote that I put there. I think that what people expect from interacting with cognitive systems, AI systems, is to get insights and, and get that additional help when those systems or complex can take into consideration many events that happen, and you'll see some examples uh, through my presentation. Now, we've done various pilots with various industries across many industries, uh, automotive, hospitality, hospitals, you'll see a few examples later on, and we've learned a few things of what our customers really care when we build this kind of assistance. And I'll go into more details, you can read through them here, I do want to mention one of which was pretty critical, and that's privacy. And people care about the data. They share certainly these kind of conversations that they do, whether it is in, in text or voice. And one of the areas where we invest heavily is to make sure that not only we adhere to all of the standards like GDPR that's coming up in Europe for privacy management, but really that the data is not used for anything else just to serve those customers. So if we build a system, for BMW or Mercedes or anyone else, the data belongs just to them and nobody takes any, any, anything else. So one of the customers we are working with is BMW. They are sitting with us in Munich at our IoT center there. And what they want to do is, as I said earlier, is really change and give us a whole new experience when we are driving or sitting in a car. And that experience doesn't really start from the time you just sit in the car and start driving. It actually starts before that. So I mentioned various qualities that these uh, assistants have to have, one of which is to be proactive. And what we mean by that is that the assistant continuously seeks all of those changing parameters. So, so think about a simple scenario. You wake up in the morning. Now you have to think what time you want to wake up, taking into account you know, the weather, Take into account traffic. Do you have to pick up or, or drop the kids to school or kindergarten or any other task you have to do and make sure that you arrive to your first meeting on time. Now, in Israel, we would open up Waze, we'll open up the Weather Channel or another app and, and do that manually. Why not have that bot or that assistant do it for us and just put the alarm clock to the correct time, wake up us in the correct time, plan our route, and off we go to the, to the work. So that's a, a simple idea of how these assistants can be much more proactive in nature while they take into account multiple changing factors throughout the day. And if something happens, they can also take more proactive action to notify about changes that happen. Another important factor that I mentioned earlier is personalization. We like to get a personal experience. So while I'm driving, I don't want to, if I'm interested in a restaurant and I want to go to eat something or I'm interested to buy a coffee and I want to have a conversation about that, I'm not interested to get everything and every possible restaurant in the area that's open now. I really want that assistant to know me, know my preference over time, learn those habits and behaviors and the things I like to go or the places I like to go and eat and just give me the best options out of that. So personalization is extremely important, but I want to make it also seamless so that this assistant continuously learns about my behaviors throughout the day 
whether I'm using it on my mobile phone, in the car, or in any other place, and it continuously improves over time. Um, when we look into the cars, there are many conversations that we can have. You know, we can activate the car, of course, command and control, that's obvious. As I mentioned earlier, points of interest is also very important. Uh, car manual is a good example. You know, oftentimes you drive and suddenly one of the lamps is blinking or is turned on. Now you have no idea or clue what it means. Uh, you may open up the car manual or stop by and start figuring out what, what it means. Can you continue to drive? Do you have to stop? Again, our assistant or what we are building with these companies is hooked up to the car engine through the CAN bus and we figure out immediately what happened even before the lamp is blinking, we would notify the driver, you know, we observe this problem, maybe your uh, uh, pressure in your t one of your tires is low. And we also give exactly advices, what should be the next plan? What should be the next action? You have to stop right now, get help, an assistant can do that for you. Or you can continue to drive to your next meeting, get on time and fix it later on. So again, an example of how proactive capabilities make our lives really, really easier and more enjoyable while driving a car. I'll show you a quick video Needs. of one of our partners. Is that partners, a thing? I'm Oli, just waiting here. There should be someone called Ollie coming to pick me up. This is an autonomic, autonomic driving car. Ollie? Hello, James. Who's that? It's me. Ali, please have a seat. Right. Where's the driver? I'm the world's first cognitive, self-driving shuttle. And I'm electric. I'm the future of travel. Is this your only voice? Can you do any other voices? Can you do a Tennessee accent? Hey, y'all. Who wants grits? I mean, honestly, I don't always trust my driving. Why would I trust a computer? Because I don't drink, text, or get tired. So how do you flirt? with other buses if you don't text. Ha, ha, ha. Was that your laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Ollie. Thank you. <laughs> so that's the experience we are working with them to, to get there. Um, I, mentioned, I mentioned other venues, so hospitality, hotels. You know, imagine again, you're coming to your room late or, or not late, after a, a long journey, a flight, a train, whatever. And you know, one of the first things you have to do, figure out where is their condition, how you open the lights, how you open the shades, put on your music or favorite TV show, so on and so forth. Again, imagine that this assistant already knows you, your preferences, it just fixes up the room ahead of time exactly to the things you like. It also knows your schedule because it's connected to your calendar. So it knows whether you had a meal or didn't have a meal. It can recommend to you things around you, things that are open, again, based on your, or on your favorite places. And if you need to activate things in the room, rather than looking for all of the knobs and buttons and figuring out, if you want to make a change, just conversate with it. And the assistant is hooked up to the room, to the control, and it can activate all of those devices that are connected there. And of course, it would learn over time your preferences and stays uh, at the hotel. One of the important things when we build these uh, assistants, so I mentioned a lot preferences and being proactive and so on. One of the other things is understanding the context in which I am currently, which means that I'm driving, I'm walking, I'm somewhere out there, I'm in a meeting. And some of these things could be inferred from my calendar or from the activities I do. If I'm with my mobile phone, we can figure out what activity you're doing. Um, we can figure out based on additional uh, sources of information. For instance, am I somewhere outside walking and, and, and st suddenly it starts to rain? Maybe the assistant should advise me not to take uh, a walk to my next meeting, even though I have time and maybe that's what I usually like to do. That's my preference, my profile. But given the current context that it is actually raining, and it's pretty cold, maybe it would advise or actually uh, call a get taxi, Uber, or, or Lyft, or whatever. So context is another major factor taken into account when we are building these assistants, in addition to the long-term preferences which we have, which is part of our profile. 
One more example in hospitality. Imagine the hospital room of the future. When will the cafeteria be open today? The cafeteria hours are from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And we can't really answer all of the non-medical questions because there's always somebody else who needs us right away. Tell me about Dr. Hollander. Dr. Judd Hollander graduated from New York University School of Medicine in 1986. A glimpse of that future is happening now at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in downtown Philadelphia. At the heart of the system is a JBL smart speaker created by Harman International. It's designed with a set of ears that can pick up voices anywhere in the room. You want the air conditioning turned down lower, the lights turned off. Um, you, you want can to do listen that. to ocean sounds. You want to listen to ocean sounds. Playing some ocean sounds for you. This technology will enable you to do it. If we can help the patient in room 20 without me leaving room 18 while that person's having a heart attack, that's why I went into medicine. So again, just one more example, and you can start to see that one of the, the capabilities or one of the things we are building into this assistant it's been virtual, so it can escort you throughout the day through the various venues that you are, uh, are, are there. So again, all of these qualities from multiple pilots with, with, with multiple customers, we are putting them together into a one coherent framework that allows us to build this kind of assistance for the various industry verticals where our customers are, are acting. One of the additional capabilities I have not yet mentioned is edge. And we see more and more of a requirement, certainly in the automotive, automotive space, but not only, to be able to work also in hybrid mode. What we call hybrid mode is a mode in which sometimes you are connected to the internet and sometimes you are disconnected. In, when, when we drive even here in Israel, oftentimes it may happen that we, have, we, lo we lose connectivity. One of the things we want to avoid is to drop the conversation with the driver. So there is a conversation going on. We may detect that there is no connectivity anymore and we need to drop. So we continue that locally with the local capabilities, command and control, and all of the things that we can do within the car. And when connectivity is getting back and we have connectivity, we can execute those commands or actions or transactions that the driver asked us to do and we couldn't execute because we needed connectivity. So being able to run these AI capabilities of conversation on edge are extremely important in our mind and we're putting a lot of emphasis to make that seamless transition between cloud and edge. I'm not have, I don't have much time to get into a lot of details here about the architecture, it's still a high level relatively. I do want to mention a few things. One. On, from the left-hand side, you can see we have our routing capability. We invest quite a lot to make the routing a seamless experience, meaning that you can conversate on multiple topics and the assistant continuously figure out which skill is the most appropriate to take care of your current conversation. With the addition of the context that I've mentioned, we can go back and forth. So I can ask about the weather in a certain destination, I can switch topic to ask about, I don't know, points of interest, restaurants, whatever. Stop that in the middle and go back to the previous conversation about the weather or, or that location I was talking about, and so on and so forth. So the combination of the routing without me having to explicitly say or remember which skill is more suitable to take care of my, my request or my question, plus the context that we have give us the power to continuously allow to really have seamless uh, experience to our users as if they speak with each and every one of us and switch topics and go back and forth. I think the other major thing, and really I don't have the time, I'll be happy to chat in the, in the, in the break, is ontologies, industry ontologies, and the role they play. I think we see that we can drive much more conversations out of ontology-based when we understand the, the domain we understand the, the entities and the relationships between them. We can also build much easier reasoning systems. All of those proactive capabilities that I've mentioned earlier, when we have ontologies of that domain, it's much easier to express those conditions when you want to fire up a, a trigger to take an action. So I think, and I believe that ontologies would play a major role per each and every industry, and that's the way uh, we are heading uh, uh, forward. Finally, I think you have mentioned it this morning as well. Um, another major area of investment, it's more of my research right now, 
is analytics of, of conversations. It's been mentioned that, you know, there aren't those that we have for the web or internet are, of course, not suitable. There are multiple parameters we can measure. We started to do that. We have some very interesting insights already from adding such analytics to our weather application, which is used by many hundreds of millions. Um, even from understanding about questions or things that people ask that your bot is not expected to answer, it's always interesting even to get those insights. Of course, there are many additional insights, such as whether a user completed a conversation or not. Again, I'll be here and be happy to take more, more questions later. Thank you very much.